Well, Jess, I mean, it's been a record-breaking season, hasn't it? Um, best one of your career or, uh, or not? Uh, yeah, you know, I think it's been um, a very interesting one for us. I think um, given everything that we have here, it's definitely up there with, with a very good time for me. Um, but obviously when we're here, we're, we're kind of we're kind of just on loan, and so we feel that um, our main main um, attraction is Seattle. But I think for myself and for Kim, we've had actually a fantastic time here at Melbourne City, and we've enjoyed every second of it. And what about, you know, sort of going into a final series on the back of that outstanding record, that 100% record? I mean, is that extra pressure you don't need? Just the feeling that, God, if we stuff it up now, after what we've achieved? No, I don't think so. I don't think we look at it like that. You know, I think that we look on what we've achieved as a huge accomplishment. Um, but then we go into the games with a separate mindset because when you have the league and then you have um, finals, you know, then it's, you have to have a different mindset because they're just one-off games. It's not about a league culture, then it's not about consistency, it's just about can you perform on this day? And that's, that's the way that we look at it. So we don't feel added pressure every time we look at our achievements, I believe we'll have a big smile on our faces. Tell us about your uh, dual role. Well, it is exactly that, a dual role. Um, I obviously play, but I have a huge part as assistant to um, to Joe, which is something that I've I've really enjoyed and learned a lot from. I think Joe's fantastic, um, and it's a, he's a really good um, person for me to learn from from the coaching perspective. Um, but we manage the the different roles really well. When it comes to training and, and in training, I am simply a player. But when it comes to analysis, individual stuff, if we do separate things, then I, then I become, I can do a coaching role and a coaching side of it. So, like I said, it, it was an interesting moment for me, an interesting decision in my career. Um, it's been tough at times, um, but I, again, have, have enjoyed it and I believe it was the right decision for me to make. What about at halftime? You ever sort of put the coaching hat on and have a go at one of your uh, teammates? Uh, well, I'm a passionate person, so I do. Um, you know, when I get frustrated, sometimes I can um, do the hair dryer, as they say. Uh, so yeah, you know, me and Joe have a little two minutes at halftime before we address the group, and the group can have the moment to reassess the half themselves, you know, because at the end of the day it's important that they realise and they recognise what's working, what's not working, so they can problem solve. It's not just about Joe and myself telling them what black, what's black, what's white, because that, it's not football, you know, things change all the time. So, yeah, of course we get together and we talk and, you know, we have a very good working relationship actually, and like I said, I have nothing but very high words to say about Joe. Do you do a lot of coaching out on the field during the games? During the games? Yeah, you know, like sometimes they say player coaches do. Right? Yeah, I think I think when I think the role for me now is it's I see things on a bigger scale and on a wider scale. Um, it's not just about my game; it's about everybody's game and everybody's mentality at that point. So yeah, you know, of course, I think I think that I do do that, but I think I do that anyway. I think that's just a player that I am. I like to organise. I like to structure and. <coughs> um, you know, I, I base a lot of my football off a organisation, off a shape, and, you know, playing in the middle of the park, you see all of that in front of you to stop it getting behind you. So I think I do that anyway. I don't think that's anything to do with my role. Jess, how, um, what are your views on Melbourne City as a club compared to, I mean, even Seattle and, and, you know, some of the, I guess, better clubs you've played for, and, and even the W League compared to, some of the overseas competitions, where's it at, where does it need to go to? I think um, from the, the City perspective I've been you know, extremely impressed with, with everything that they have and everything that they are working towards with regards to the women's game. Um, I said to someone the other day that you know, what Melbourne City women have here, only a very few clubs in the world will have this facility and have this backing and have everything that that we have. Um, that doesn't mean to say that Melbourne City as a football club are one of the best in the world. I'm just saying that the 
facilities and the structure and everything that they are doing for women's football, there's only very few clubs in the world that have that structure and that is a huge thing to have in Australia because no one has ever had it before. And so, you know, they're setting standards, huge standards, and it's very exciting times for the W League here because next year clubs have a choice to make. They either catch up and try and match and invest or they don't and then that's not very helpful for the league. I think that what Man Melbourne City have done here in the City group um, could be um, the change in force in, in Australian football, women's football for sure. Um, and like I said, I'm just extremely thankful um, that I could be a part of that. And what about the league itself and the standards? I mean, obviously, I would imagine it's nowhere quite as demanding as the uh, American competition, but mm -hmm. how would it stack up against uh, Britain or in the UK or any of those other clubs that you may have played against for? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the, the standard here is it's growing, it's developing, the league is developing. I think it needs a focus point now um, from Australia as a whole. You know, they, they've been very dedicated towards the Matildas over the last 18 months to two years because they've had the Asian Cup and they've had the World Cup and now they've got the Olympics, um, which is completely understandable. Um, but I feel that the future of the Matildas is, is built around their domestic league because that's where they're going to get their players from. So they really have to push the W League forward now and keep it developing. Um, and I think it's important that the internationals that they bring in you know, keep taking the standard higher and keep helping the youth and the development and the local players to develop but in the right way, in the right mindset, with the right mentality. And I feel if all of that can be done together, I feel the league can be a very, very strong one. What about Monday's game, Jess? Ready to roll? It's exciting. Mm. Mm. Should win? I think it's, you know, I think it's up to us. I think if you look at... Um, what we've been able to do this season and the players that we have, I think it's it's up to us and our mentality. You know, we have a week now to prepare and Brisbane are going to be a good team. Brisbane are uh, always going to be tricky, you know, and the reality of it is is that everyone, everyone right now really wants to beat us. So they're going to give an extra 10, 15% on top of what they have. Um, but we have to understand that, we have to know that, and we have to be ready for that, and I believe that we will be. Like I said, I think the group that we have is a very, very special group. Um, and I don't think right now that we want to have the season that we've had and, and, then, and then drop out on Monday. So, you know, I, I believe in these girls. I'm confident in these girls. Um, I don't think that the fact that it's a semi-final will will hinder us and I'm really excited to play at Amy Park, you know, I think that'll help us a big pitch.